Hello everyone, this is a new video on the Landscape Combinator plugin and more specifically about the buildings features. I will show you all the settings so that you can customize the buildings as you wish. So first, in the content browser, search for building and drag this building C++ class. You obtain an actor which has a spline component and then you can press generate building. The building settings are all grouped in an object called building configuration. And you can either use an inline building configuration and modify here everything, or if you uncheck this, you can use an existing building configuration. And of course you can create your own. Now let's keep the inline building configuration so that we can explore this, the settings. We have all these subsections to go through and let's start with the structure. You have two kinds of buildings, buildings without any inside, like that one, or buildings with floors and empty insides. I'm going to press generate when modified so that whenever I modify a setting, the building is automatically regenerated. So that's the inside of the building. You see you have uh, multiple floors. Unfortunately, there are no stairs to go from one floor to the other. But if people are interested, this is something I could add. Of course, generating buildings without inside is going to be uh, faster. So if you care about performance, it's something to keep in mind. Before going into more settings, I will show you uh, how to manipulate the spline. So just click on the spline component here, and then you can move the individual points of the spline. So let's try to make a, a moon-shaped building. If you press Alt while dragging, it will duplicate the point. So you can add more points like that. All right, so let's continue with the settings. First, you can control the thickness of the wall outside the spline and inside the spline. So here it's 10 centimeters. Let's make it uh, one meter to exaggerate it. Or you can decide not to have external walls at all, zero. And then you can also change the thickness internally to the spline. So let's make it 50. So here the walls grow to the inside of the building. I will keep it at 10 and 1 for now. Uh, if you want to make uh, the inside yourself, you can just you can also completely remove the floor tiles. Now the auto compute number of floors setting is used when you import uh, building data from OpenStreetMap. And sometimes the buildings from OpenStreetMap they have data on the number of floors or the height of the buildings. And so auto compute number of floors will use this data if it's available on the imported splines. Uh, here we are using five floors. Let's see, we can use, you can change the number here as you wish. And you can also use a random number of floors. So you can say between five and 20. And then whenever you, you regenerate, it will change the size. This is more useful when you have many buildings and then you want to reuse the same building configuration for all buildings. And with that, you can randomize the number of floors. So now let's stay with five floors. Then wall subdivisions. This is to create rounded buildings. First, you have to make sure that all your spline points have type curve. And so you, you see here the curvature of your spline. And then if you want the building to adapt to that, you need to create subdivisions for the walls. The higher the value, the smoother your building will be. But of course, also the higher you go, the more triangles you will get in the building geometry. So here you have a lot of geometry. But if it's just for one building and then you don't care about performance, then you can go crazy with that number. Then for the bottom wall, you can add some wall at the bottom of your building. So let's say you want uh, two meters. So you write 200 and then you get this extra wall, which is added. The setting auto pad wall bottom. This is used when you generate buildings on slope or when um, the spline points are not all at the same height. So let's say you had uh, spline points like that. And let's put zero here. And if you put auto pad, then 
it will use as much padding as needed between the lowest spline point and the highest spline point. And then you can add extra on top of that highest spline point. Here I put 500, it will add 500 on top of that highest spline point. Now then let me put that spline point back at zero. I'll just leave 100 for now. Likewise, at the top, you can add an extra wall. So let's put 50 here, and it will make an extra wall at the top of your building. This final option is to automatically generate UVs when you generate the buildings. But in our case, uh, I'm just using flat texture, so it, it won't really matter. We are done with the general structure settings, and now the materials. So for the materials, you can specify a materials array, you can put as many materials as you need. Here I'm just going to put five. And these materials are indexed in your array starting from zero. So here my materials go from zero to four. Three is red, four is blue. And then here you can start changing the material index for some of the walls. For instance, for the roof, I can put three. It will make it red. I can also change the material for under the roof. I'll make it blue. I can change the interior material index. Let's make it one. Here, as you can see, it only changes the extra wall, which is at the top, as well as at the very bottom of the building. But not for the floors in between. And that's something that we'll see in the next section. All right, so now we get to the interesting part, which is the levels section. This is where we modify the floors, where we can add attachments, where we can decide the placement of the holes and so on. First, you have an array of levels. And here I have just one level in my array. This means that I have only one kind of level and it's just repeating on all the floors. And that level is repeating thanks to the level loops. In level loops, again, you have an array and then in that array, we have a single element which is stating that the level zero should be repeated. Now, let's say you want two kinds of levels and you want them to be alternating. So you would create another level either by adding a new one here or duplicating an existing level. And then in that second level, let's say the height is larger, so five meters. And then you want alternating between uh, zero and one. So you say that the loop goes from zero to one. And then that means you have a level, level zero here and then a large level one, level zero, level one. And if we add more floors to it, then this pattern keeps on repeating. Now let's first modify our first kind of level, which is index zero. You can change the level height, which is again in centimeters. You can change the thickness of the floor here. You can change uh, the material which is used for the floor. So here I want to use the red. And here, as you can see, it only changes the floor every other level. You can also change the ceiling. So if I want to make the, uh, the ceiling blue, and if I go look underneath, the ceiling here is blue. And for the other level, it's not changed. Now let's have a look at our wall segments. I will explain that reset wall segments setting later. Wall segments. Again, they work with an array at the levels. And again, we have uh, loops. So here we have three kinds of segments. I will show you later what they are. We can see that uh, the segments zero and one are looping. And so it means that the wall segment index two only appears once. Let's first have a look at wall segment index zero. Wall segment index zero is a wall and its segment length is uh, five meters and I will highlight it in blue so that we can see where it is. I will also highlight segment two in red so that we can differentiate them. And then wall segment one corresponds to the windows. Now, if you start from that spline point and you go here to the left, you can see that you have wall segment zero, then one, zero, one, and then two. Then from that point to that point, you only have two because there is no room to place zero and one. 
from that point to that point, you have again only two. And then from that point to that point, you have zero, one, two, because there is only room for one uh, repetition of zero, one. Let's move the spline points a bit so that we can see it clearer here. So here, if I start from that spline point, again, I see a repetition for zero, one, zero, one, and then at the end, all segment number two. Let's open up the settings of all segment indexed one, which is the whole segment for the whole. You see that if we change the kind to a wall, then we no longer have holes there. So let's put back hole. Auto expand will make the size of the hole the same length as the size of the other wall segments, which are auto expand. But for now, let's put a fixed size of uh, 200. So you can see now that the hole has size 200, but the attachment is still 100, so we'll change that later. You can change the distance to the floor, putting it uh, a little bit higher or lower. Uh, you can change the, the height of the hole. Here I put 160. Then you can change the index of the material used under the hole on the exterior or on the, on the interior. So here I put one on the exterior, also one on the interior. And then you can also change the material above the hole, uh, on the inside or on the outside. Um, you can also change the, the wall thickness. Here, let's put one on the inside as the others, and then I'll increase a bit the external wall thickness. And then on that wall segment, we have uh, an attachment, which is that uh, window mesh here. You can have as many attachments as you want. Here we have an array and we have a single attachment for that window. You can either use an instant static mesh component. These windows will all be instances of the same instant static mesh component. Or you can use a spline mesh component, which will take more resources, but which will let you have curved meshes. Or the attachment can also be any kind of actor or blueprint. Here you set the offset of the mesh. We know that our hole has distance to floor 50, so we can put 50 if we want it to be aligned. You can change the width, so we put 200 and the height was 160. You can change the thickness of your attachment as well. Then you can also play around with uh, the axis if the orientation of your mesh is different. Okay, so now I'll change uh, the other kind of level. So let's move up. Here we changed uh, level index zero. And now I will change level index one and I will make it uh, just one wall segment with one mesh, just repeating itself all around the building. I'm not going to use the reset wall segments on corner. So this means that the wall segments that we are using are going to loop one time and they will not be reset on every spline point like the other level was. So for level index one, I'll, I will just keep one wall segment, which is the wall segment with the window. Or here I got an error because of the loop. I'll just put a loop from zero to zero because I have just one wall segment. Now I want to make the windows cover the whole floor and I don't want any walls. So I will make each segment uh, four meters wide. The distance to floor needs to be zero because I want the hole to go from the very top to the very bottom of the level. The height of the level is 500. So I will put the height of the hole to also be 500. And then I will make the attachment uh, fill the width and the height. And I will remove the offset. And now it looks okay, except for the floor. The floor was 20, so I will make the hole also start from 20 and the height 480. And I will add uh, an offset to the windows to be 20. Now it looks a little bit funny because since we used instant static mesh, the, the windows can't bend. But if you use spline mesh component, then you do get some bending depending on the geometry that you're using. And I think that's all I wanted to show for customizing the attachments. So that's our level one index. And then the blue and red is our level zero. And as I said before, in the level loops, you specify that you want to alternate between zero and one. 
So for instance, if you just wanted to repeat the level index zero, then you could you could put a loop of zero zero, and it would only put level one at the very top. On the other hand, you could put one and one, and it will make the level one loop forever and just level index zero at the very bottom. You can have loops with more than two elements, and we, you can also have several loops in your array. I could have a loop which is looping the level index zero, as well as a loop which is looping level index one. Then on the bottom half, you get all the levels index zero, and then on the top half, you have all the levels indexed one. Oh, and I remembered, I actually have a, a static mesh window that has more triangles. It's called bend window. So if you use a spline mesh component, you should use a mesh that has enough triangles to be deformed. We are done with all the settings, and I will now show you how to save the building configuration. You might remember that at the beginning of the video, we checked the inline building configuration checkbox. And just right here, you have a section building configuration conversion, where you can create a new configuration class from the inline building configuration that you have right there. So I will call it a tutorial. Click the create button. Now I have that asset which is created in my main folder and I can reuse it in uh, other buildings. So let's save that level and then let's go to the main example map. I will show you the, the map tiler uh, combination. In that, in that landscape combination, I have uh, three actors. First, a landscape spawner, which will create a landscape and it will also add a satellite image as a decal. I also have a spline importer for the buildings and then the buildings from spline actor, which will actually create the buildings from the splines. Let's say that in our buildings, we want to reuse the class that we have just generated. So we select it here, tutorial, and then we're going to copy the settings from that class to the inline building configuration. So all the settings that we have created before are here. I'll just modify it a little bit because now we'll have hundreds of buildings. So uh, using spline mesh components or uh, many wall subdivisions or many wall subdivisions would make the buildings take a very long time to generate. So I'll put wall subdivisions to zero. When the number of floors is available, I will use it. When it's not available, I will use a, a random number of floors between four and eight. And then in the levels, I will use instance static mesh components. For level index zero, it's okay. And for level index one, we had spline mesh component. So here I'll put back instance static mesh component. And I will put back the normal window with less geometry. And now let's run the landscape combination. And so all the buildings are now using that same style. If I go back to the buildings from Spline Actor, we've modified a little bit the configuration. So again, we can save it. Uh, let's call it Tutorial Optimized. And we can create a new building configuration class from it. And then let's say I want to randomize between that style and another style. Then I can uncheck Use Inline Building Configuration. And then here in my array, I can put as many uh, building configuration class as I want. So I have the two colors building configuration. Let's put uh, the weight to one. And I have the tutorial building configuration and let's put the weight to two. This will make it so that there are twice as more such buildings than that one. And then you can regenerate the buildings. And then again, after a minute, you get all the, the buildings that are generated. Here I'm noticing that we have some wall segments that are extending like that around the corner. That's because in our rounded building configuration, we were not using uh, the reset on every spline point. So I'll quickly open that up. And, and in level index one, I'll check the reset wall segments on corner checkbox. And I will also check that auto expand checkbox to make sure that the wall segments cover the whole floor. And then again, regenerate the buildings. And then again, after a minute, you get all the, the buildings that are generated. That's all I wanted to show. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can try the plugin for free by downloading it from GitHub. And the plugin is also available on the Fab Marketplace. And feel free to join the Discord if you have any questions. Bye bye.